Welcome back to the show. This is What Sold, where we talk about items that we sold on eBay. We'll tell you what we paid, where we got it, roughly how long it took, and what kind of profit we're looking at here. Hoping that this can help some of you out there, whether you do it part-time, full-time, or are considering selling some things online. What I'm gonna show you today is all about eBay sales, um, and that's oftentimes where we get comps for how to know how to price things and what we can expect to sell something for. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up today, we have uh, some scrap gold. We'll get in different types of jewelry from time to time. Uh, we sell a lot of jewelry and sometimes we get lots in that have damaged pieces, broken pieces, pieces that we need to repair. And just because a part is broken, like a little ring or um, like a, a, little, a little bead or something like that, doesn't mean that it's worthless. We will collect and keep stuff instead of throwing it away until we have enough grams to make sense to sell things. We do this for both gold and silver. This particular lot happens to be all 14 karat gold. And so um, you can see this is, you know, they, these are not gold plated or gold filled. These are solid gold. It's only not even three grams, but still, if you look at the cost per gram of 14 karat gold, and then we are willing to sell it a little bit below spot value, then you will get uh, a rough idea of how much. And that one was a hundred dollars. Right here we have what they call a swung vase. And I didn't know until recently, I guess the reason they call it a swung vase is that it's a blown glass that they, I guess, swing kind of like, kind of like, um, in, in order to get the end of the glass to kind of go out in, in these different shapes. And um, this one was quite small, um, but uh, very beautiful blue, if you like the blue color. Um, it wasn't crystal clear. There's definitely, um, you know, bubbles and different things. And I mean, it's, it's blown glass. It's an artistic piece. Um, anytime I find these, almost anytime I find them, um, I'll buy them. Um, if they're reasonably priced, of course, because I've sold red ones, green ones, blue ones. Um, $20, I think I paid $3 for that. This was something that I'd never come across before. It was called Davis artificial horizon um, vintage. It was some sort of um, something for, um, uh, what do you call that when you go surveying, I guess surveying. And so this was like tinted glass and there was a way that they constructed this so that they could look through it. Um, I don't know, it's a piece of specialty equipment for a specialty type of um, task. And it's a vintage thing, came in its original box. This came in with a bunch of antiques we bought, so I didn't buy this individually, but I had no more than a dollar in it, and it sold for $24. A little bit faster than I expected. I thought that could be something that would sit there for a year or, or more, and it didn't. Um, here's another thing that I got out of this uh, antique store buyout. Um, I put mid-century on that. I mean, it's probably from the 1950s, 1960s. When a bunch of the soldiers came back from World War II, um, in the late 40s, um, a lot of them, there was kind of this um, resurgence of interest in um, sort of like island life and the things that go along with that. So types of drinks and tiki things like tiki bars, because a lot of um, men who were stationed in Hawaii um, or in the Pacific would frequent these bars and they had these drinks and they had this whole experience. And when they came back, a bunch of um, restaurateurs decided to start making bars in their restaurants and even freestanding bars that um, had to do with, with tiki stuff. They had the whole look, um, they had, you know, the lays and the certain types of mixed drinks and then glasses that looked like, uh, like the tiki, like the to like totems um, or these sort of, um, you know, uh, motifs that are come from that that area and so this is a, just a wood carving um this is like a face kind of it's an interestingly carved piece that sits on this sort of three it's almost like arms coming down but it's made to look kind of like a, a, a tiki type thing that's what i put in the title tiki stuff sells really well tiki certain types of glasses um, and barware. So keep a lookout for that if you weren't aware. But I accepted a $40 offer for this. And uh, again, I had no more than a dollar or two into it. 
Uh, this was also a kind of a strange item I've not come across. It was this doll. Um, it was made of wood. It was mounted on this piece of metal on the back. You can see it's a, a wooden. It's been hand painted. Um, the arms at the elbows and the knees articulate a little bit. It's just kind of standing there. You have these kind of flat head screws there, so it kind of indicates it's it either is old or it's made to look a little bit older. I don't know. My, my best guess is that this was made um, maybe for like displaying um, doll clothing, possibly, or maybe it was just sold for for this reason alone, just to have something that looks interesting. Um, but uh, twenty dollars paid two dollars for that. Here is, uh, this took a long time to sell, but the, like, and I had it off for a long time and then I put it back on and it sold pretty much immediately. But these are uh, bookends, bookends. And the thing about these is that um, in a bookshelf, you're looking, if like you're looking directly at a bookshelf, you're looking at the spines of books oftentimes to see what they're called, what the name is, what it is. And the bookends on a shelf, let's say, or on the top of like a mantle, uh, would be on either end. And so if you're looking at the books, you're only seeing the edge of the bookend. You're not seeing the the side of it or the, the face of it. And so um, I don't know if people don't use these a whole lot anymore or if it's like you don't really even see what the image is that well anyways, but these are made of brass. They're very heavy. This is like the thinker. Um, uh, you know, there's a famous sculpted piece there. And so $40, um, I paid $5 for that at a thrift store. Next up, we have this old letter, and I buy. I also go through lots of paper ephemera, um, old ledgers, old notebooks, scrapbooks, letters, postcards, um, marriage licenses, um, just all kinds of like merchandise, mer mer mercantile type, um, you know, paperwork, um, all kinds of things like that. And so this is. They came in a lot of a bunch of letters, and there were a couple of different things that were interesting about this. One was, well, for, uh, first of all, the age of it, 1918. So we're looking at World War One era, um, and you see up here you've got this big stamp that says Tank Corps, um, and the th uh, something Rover, but it's like a big tank with like a almost looks like a cat shaking on top of it or something. It's interesting. But then you have this purple. Um, Washington stamp on here, a three cent stamp. And so there were a bunch of interesting stamps that were, you know, harder to come by. You don't see a whole lot. Um, and the letter was cool. It was somebody writing back to a loved one during the war. Um, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania is where that was um, postmarked at. $20. I think I bought a bundle of, of maybe 20 or 30 for $10. So just one out of this lot, I doubled my money. And then I've got others that I'm getting interest in all the time too. And so um, just because it's old and it's paper and you don't know the people's names and you don't, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have value because these, uh, these definitely will all sell eventually. And I'm going to really do well on it um, based on what I paid. This is a pair of glasses, eyeglasses. They're Ray-Bans. And so Ray-Ban is a pretty popular brand. It has been in the past and it's, it's fairly popular now as well. They, they uh, command pretty good prices for brand new items. And then certain vintage items uh, or items that are sold used but still in good condition can bring good money. Uh, these are, you know, sort of, I wouldn't say secret, but these are in a category of maybe a handful of items that I love buying and selling because I know that I can find them in almost every thrift store. Uh, glasses, I mean. Um, glasses or sunglasses. And they're almost never more than a dollar. A lot of times they'll be 50 cents or maybe you'll get five for a dollar. Um, and so when you search through, sometimes you find really nice brands, like high-end brands or things made in Italy or, you know, things like that um, that are still in good condition. You got them for 50 cents. So these are Ray-Bans. Um, you can see up here, it gives you this, the, the, the lens kind of like what the prescription would be or that sort of thing, roughly the age or the, the model. Um, good condition. I paid a dollar for these. I sold them for $20. Um, I bought a basket of glasses, vintage glasses to newer glasses um, for $20. And I want to say that there were like maybe a hundred pairs of glasses in there. And I, this was one of the ones that was in here. So, um, oh no, sorry. I bought these on the same day, um, but these were only a dollar. But uh, the other ones I got, I've broken up into smaller lots and I've made really good money on those. So if uh, things like, like uh, neckties, belts, glasses. Um, these are all 
uh, things that you can find at almost any thrift store. Certainly Goodwills and places have them. And you're never paying much more than a dollar for them. So um, there, you stand to make a really good margin if you are willing to sell that particular type of item. Now this was a bittersweet uh, sale. I had this, uh, I bought it because I liked it. I, I really enjoy artwork, specifically oil paintings. Um, and so this was a quite, quite a large piece. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in here so you can take a look. Uh, it's a very well done piece, very uh, it's impressionistic. This is like a kind of a senior sergeant sort of style of painting. It's a woman in a pink dress holding up um, almost looks like a ruler or something almost looks like she's a um, a teacher um, but you can see this the brush work here kind of rough there in the arm but uh and even pretty loose in the midsection but uh when you back up and that's the thing i love about impressionistic pieces is that you know they're only doing 60 or 70 percent of the work and they're expecting you as the viewer to to do the other 20 or 30 percent or 40 percent of the work putting it together with your eyes so if you really study it it, it can look kind of rough, but if you back up, you put it together and it can look very, very crisp to your eyes. And so it was a very well done piece. Uh, this was not a well-known artist. It was not signed on the back or on the front rather, although um, I kind of did some research and found out who did it. But this piece sold for nearly a thousand dollars. And the only caution I'm gonna give you is selling artwork because there's a lot of money that can be made if you know what to look for and you find good pieces for good deals is that uh, it can be very difficult and also um, time consuming to package and ship these items and hope that they get there with no um, damage because it's soft in the middle. It's, you know, it's got this big heavy frame that oftentimes can be uh, maybe crumbling or um, degrading in some way. And then you've got just a piece of canvas possibly in the middle. So you have to put some work into trying to keep that area protected. You don't want that piece scratched. You don't want a hole poked in it. Uh, that will spell out a return for you immediately and you'll get, uh, you'll have to give all the money back and then you'll have a badly damaged piece so if you don't know how to repair things like that you know you be very careful or have a good plan going into it know how much the box is going to cost know where to get it that kind of stuff um the next one up here is a uh, bracelet it's a charm bracelet sterling silver by james avery and um i know they have places in texas i don't know if james avery started in texas or not but um it's just a, it's a it's a brand it's a maker um this cost me three dollars at a local thrift store that i off like frequently monthly i find both gold pieces and silver pieces that uh, are maybe dip, like kind of nondescript marking that they didn't see uh, i paid three dollars for this i'm it's almost always three dollars um last week i bought two pairs of gold 14 gold solid gold earrings for three dollars a piece um and then this one was was uh, so three dollars a week later uh, uh, after one cycle of an auction, I got $60 for it. And it was a little bit unique, only one charm, but the charm on it is this heart. And I wasn't seeing a whole lot like that. Um, you can even see it's like heavily tarnished. It's not bright and shiny like it was when it was sold initially, but I don't know if people collect specifically that stuff or they polish it up and resell it. I don't know. Um, this one I had for a while, this came with an antique store inventory that I purchased. And it's this really interesting iridescent kind of looking, uh, artistic looking uh, vase. And uh, it had a, a piece of paperwork with it. In fact, I don't know if it's, if it's in the photos. You can see this, I'm holding it there. Um, uh, this must be some kind of interesting glaze that they do. Uh, yeah, wall, Wally, Wallini, something like that. That's a picture of another piece that's similar. Uh, and Walin, so a Reku, Reku, a Raku vessels out of Marietta, Georgia. I don't know. Um, I didn't buy this specifically. I probably wouldn't have bought this because I don't know a whole lot about this. And I oftentimes stay away from ceramics and pottery and dish, dishes unless I'm confident that they will sell for good money. But anyways, $20 plus they paid me uh, for shipping. So I was happy with that. I just put these together. I originally tried to sell this... Um, these each of these by themselves and they didn't sell and so i was like I'm trying to be creative and get, and get something sold and i put these together and what you're looking at here are two individual items i bought separately at different times one is a letter opener and the other one is this little sterling silver um cordial goblet or a little 
cup that has this bright kind of yellow enamel paint on the inside of it. Uh, both of them are pretty heavily tarnished. I had at one time polished this little cup entirely and it has completely tarnished again in the time that I, I had it. Um, but then the handle on this is interesting. So here's the little cup. You can see it. You can see the enamel paint. It's a Gorham brand. And then this was interesting. It's a sterling silver handle, but it says 24K, like as in 24 karat gold. My guess is that this originally had a, a solid gold, like a very, very tiny um, gold-like leaf over the handle. And then over time it got worn off or possibly somebody had it and harvested the gold from it and then just discarded or, or donated um, the item. But they were, uh, they were sold together it says on the the blade there it says sterling handle so it does say that it's made of sterling although it doesn't say sterling on the handle itself which is a little bit unique usually the item itself that has that content of silver will be stamped um, rather than having the the that stamped on uh, on the steel portion but either way I got seven bids out of this and forty dollars and I only paid I think I paid two dollars for uh, the cup and I paid a dollar for that. So I was only three dollars in on that on that lot. This came uh, this next lot of Singer items came with an actual Singer sewing machine that I got in an antique store that I bought. And so what I did was I took I harvested all the components, the uh, the thread. Uh, there was like it says zigzagger, a button holder, other, you know, uh, peripheral accessories um, with the original boxes and paperwork, which was cool to see. Um, lots of items here. I pulled those all away and I'm selling the sewing machine locally because it's so big and heavy. I can't really ship that because I don't ship freight. Um, and then I'm selling, I sold the smaller items that are usable, um, on, 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 on eBay here. And so I put them in all as a lot. I got two bids, $51. I was pretty happy with that. I wasn't sure if it would sell, but it did actually sell in the very first round of the auction. Now, I love these, and I've only got one left. Sometimes I sell them individually, sometimes I sell them in lots like this, but I had a bunch that were similar, and these are you know, antique, I would say, because they're early 1900s, possibly late 1800s, um, eyeglass spectacles, but they're that round style, kind of like the John Lennon uh, round style, and those sell really well. So if you're looking for uh, two different things, one, the really round ones seem to do well for me, and also ones that have are gold filled. So you can see this one, uh, the bridge is you know kind of a, that plastic or whatever, but right around here, um, the hinges on the side are gold filled, whereas this one you see the nose bridge here, the bridge piece that is gold filled. And so a couple of these had gold filled, uh, those little stems that come back uh, around the ear. A lot of those were gold filled as well. So people do a variety of things. Sometimes they get them just to harvest the gold. Sometimes they get them um, and they clean them or they'll repair them and then they'll sell them for more money. Uh, not these specific glasses, but I had somebody recently buy a lot of glasses and in, in communicating with me, I discovered that they buy them to put onto um, vintage or antique uh, teddy bears. So like stuffed animals, they'll take glasses, old glasses as well, put them on the bears and then sell them. And I, it's like a creative way, I guess, to sell them, or maybe they put them in a store, like an antique store and they sell them that way, but that's what they do. So, uh, I almost never like to sell these for less than 20 bucks. And usually it's more like 30 or more. Um, but I'd had these a while and I just decided to kind of push them and just kind of get them out there. I took a lower price just to get it faster. Sometimes I do that. Um, so $61, five bids. On another day, it might have been as high as $80 or $90. But I was just, uh, all I could work with was the, uh, the, uh, the, the buyers that were on there that week. Here's another painting. This was cool. I, I sold three pieces of art in two weeks time. Uh, large pieces of art. This one. Um, I had originally purchased for $300 on eBay as well. This is the funny thing. So if you wait beyond 90 days, nobody can go back and see what sold beyond 90 days when you're looking at comps. And so nobody, for example, when they see me selling this can look back to see if it had sold recently. Like if I had bought it and was trying to resell it, or maybe it got relisted for some reason. If you went back in time, you wouldn't see 
that it was ever bought on here. But I did buy it on eBay and I waited more than 90 days and then I sold it on eBay for more than double what I paid. So I paid around $300, including shipping on that. And then I took a best offer um, for $600. So exactly double. Now after fees and things, obviously I didn't exactly double my money, but uh, I love artwork because if I like the piece, I put it up on my wall. Every time I come to the office and work, I get to see it, I get to think about it. Do I want to sell that? Do I not want to sell it? Um, I had the uh, the painting I showed you earlier with the woman for about a year and a half before I sold it, and I just enjoyed having it. I just enjoyed having it. So, um, you know, it's good, though, to let go of things sometimes so that you don't fall in the trap of I buy and buy and buy because that's fun, and then I never actually sell the things. Um, uh, and it's okay if you buy to, for, for collecting your things. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're like me and you make a full like your full-time job, you make your living at selling things, then you don't really have a choice <laughs> um, if you want to actually earn money. So that was a cool one. And then this is another example of something that I bought at a thrift store for $3 that was marked 14 karat gold. Um, and they didn't know. So I, th I turned a $3 purchase um, into a $100 sale. Um, these are like you know, abalone, like mother of pearl, uh, beautiful. And you can even see right here at the top on the back, it says 14 K. Um, sometimes people don't know where to look. Sometimes it's, you know, a statement or a number that they don't know. Like I've bought, um, I bought bracelets that say seven, five, zero on them before for three to $5. And they end up being a $1,500 solid 18 karat gold bracelet because the people didn't know that 750 is the European hallmark for 18 karat gold. Um, so education is really important, but also sometimes the volume of things that they get in is so great, they don't have the luxury of time to spend even five minutes per item to research them adequately, adequately in order to price them correctly. They're just like, Nope. When we get earrings, earrings are $2 a piece. And they, you know, you get them, you put them on the little card, you hang them up because we're going to get more earrings tomorrow and we can't spend that time. And so that's the deal. Uh, and, and so sometimes people like myself, uh, well, that's the whole reason I'm able to make money is that sometimes uh, I, ha I have knowledge that someone else doesn't have, or um, I am able to um, find a benefit in the fact that they, they don't have the time to research it adequately. Um, anyways, so here we are. Uh, here's another, like, a, this is a record. I don't buy vinyl albums to, to resell a whole lot, mainly because uh, it's one of those genres where you can go down a very long, deep rabbit hole and spend, you know, tons of time researching the nuances of, like, how to grade something or what people are looking for and then still not really feel like you know <laughs> what you're supposed to know. Um, so I do like I do like uh, vinyl albums, and I have a record player myself for personal use. But this came in with a lot. It was a sealed copy of an Elvis vinyl. It was blue vinyl. Uh, this is the blue album, and they made it in blue, uh, which is cool. It still had the original sticker price there. Riches special, $4.99, $20. Uh, and the thing about vinyl uh, and music is the same as paper media, you can sell it uh, and, and ship it media mail. So you're only spending about $3 and what, 59, 69 cents, something like that. Um, here's a nice piece of a, a little set of jewelry I put together. I've got tons of jewelry. I mean, I'm sitting on thousands of pieces of jewelry in this room right now that I haven't sold yet. Um, a lot of them are listed, but um, sometimes I sell individually, sometimes I sell in large lots, and then small ones like this. This was just one I was casually putting together. It's just six pieces, um, but $15, um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm never spending more than 2 or $3 on basic pieces. If I know it's a really nice brand, uh, I know it'll sell well, I have experience with it, I'll pay up because I already know it's going to sell. But ones that are like not branded, but still, um, you know, decent. Um, I have to at least get my money back out of what I've paid for them originally. Um, if I'd bought these individually, um, I would have spent no more than $18 total because there's six pieces here. Um, I wouldn't have spent more than $3 a piece, but I bought a large lot. So I was really more like a dollar in on each of these. So $6 in, I sell it for $15.50 plus. This is a uh, Trafari brand costume jewelry as well. And these are all pieces that I found separately, but I decided to sell them in a lot. So, you know, I probably spent 
ten dollars on this i would say probably between two and three dollars per piece and i would call this four pieces um, i count a set of earrings as one so two brooches earrings and a necklace 26 dollars. you see seven bids so like this costume jewelry of certain brands you're gonna get interest you can sell them uh buy it now um and just wait wait a while or you can do auctions but you're usually going to get interest um in auctions if you set the the starting price pretty low here's another piece of artwork um not a painting but this was um basically like a block print so you'd have this piece of either wood or linoleum and these um specific cutting tools for uh cutting down into the block and so you have this relief of the image, either a negative or positive image. Um, in this case, hummingbirds and leaves. In fact, let me pull out this. It's a nice piece, um, you know, especially people who like birds. And so what they did here in this is they, uh, they would have run this through um, a roller. Uh, they would have rolled ink on it or even hand-painted ink uh, onto it uh, or paint. And then they would have... Uh, they would either uh, either have rolled it through a press or they might have pressed it straight down, like stamped it. It's large, but it would be like a stamp. You're just stamping it down on paper. Um, this one, this particular one at the bottom, let me see if I zoomed in on this. Hummingbirds is the title. 23 over 75 means they did 75 copies of this exact same piece, and this is number 23. Um, if you're buying a piece that is a print of some kind, like a lithograph, an etching, um, the, you know, your, your best bet for value is if, A, if the artist is known, if, if, if they're a well-known person, B, if it's a one of a kind, that's great. If it is a, a numbered print, it's best to be in like in the first, like a, the highest number as possible. One out of a hundred is like the best out of a hundred and a hundred out of a hundred is the worst because the more they stamp it or the more they roll it, the more times that they press it. Uh, depending on what type of piece it is, if it's a metal plate or a, another plate, um, if that's, there's a degradation in the, the uh, effectiveness of that stamp of absorbing the ink or of uh, uh, it's pressing the burrs down every time. And so it's, um, the quality of it decreases over time. So the quality is best in the very beginning and also um, it's some of the earliest ones that were, were made. And so people uh, are you know more likely to want those more or pay more for those. And then here's the artist signature. And that's another thing. If it's a known artist, it's signed, it's numbered. And so it, it's, it's great. Sometimes you'll see it and it, it doesn't look like it's been hand done or maybe it, it's like hand done, but it's a copy. That's not as good as if you see an actual ink or pencil. That means the artist actually had their hand on this exact piece. Um, when they made it. So uh, this came in with stuff from a thrift store I bought. Um, I didn't buy this individually. It came with a bunch of artwork. I'm probably about $3 in and uh, got 60 for it. This was uh, also a piece that came from, this thing came from the antique store buyout and had a bunch of kind of like just not good quality old stuff that I was going through and I was kind of discouraged. And then I came across this piece and it's ugly looking. I mean, it's old. I mean, you might like the design, but it's definitely tarnished. It's dirty. Uh, but then you turn it over and you look very closely at the back right here. There is a stamp. It says Gorham Sterling 965. So 925 is 925 parts out of 1,000 silver. So there's another 75 parts that are not silver, usually to help with... Um, you know, uh, like strength and, and integrity of the piece. Um, this is 965, so it's more than sterling. It's not 925, it's 965. So it's got a little bit more silver in it than a typical piece. And it's a large piece, so it's pretty heavy. So that's why I got $200 out of this. Um, I don't remember what the gram weight was, and I don't even think I weighed it. But um, 200, I was very happy with this. I don't know if a person's gonna melt that down or if they're gonna polish it or what but uh, I was happy with that sale. Here was a cool thing. I had a pocket watch with this chain and with this, um, this fob here. Um, for, I actually had the fob. I'm gonna double click on this here. Up for sale for a long time, didn't sell it. It's an, it's an incredible, it's a very large antique emerald. Lots of inclusions in it, so it's not, it wouldn't be great for um, 
the greatest piece for like being translucent, but it had 14 karat gold. It was 14 karat gold around it. And uh, the back here, well, hold on a second, here we go. The back is a uh, just a gold filled chain, but I had it attached to a pocket watch for a while. Didn't sell, didn't sell. Then finally somebody got on and said, I want just the fob. Would you sell me just the fob? And I think I was trying to sell everything for like $1,200 or maybe $1,000. And they're like, I want just the fob. And I was like, okay, that's going to be, um, it's going to be like, I can't remember what I said. Four, I was like, it's going to be $500. And they're like, okay. So I'm like, all right. So I put it up and then they're like, no, I wanted the chain with it too. I'm like, okay, well, it's going to be 580 if you want the chain. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I ended up selling it. I paid about $200 for this, um, this fob by itself. And the chain... I got for $3 at a thrift store. Uh, it was gold filled, but they didn't know it. So I was like, you know, $203 in on this, sold it for $580. Uh, that fob was cool. Unique piece. I will probably never come across one like that ever again. I've never seen one before. Uh, definitely old, definitely from the 1800s. Um, optimally, they will have a solid gold pocket watch chain and a solid gold case uh, that a pocket watch is in, good quality. It just, it deserves to be with other solid gold pieces as a part of one package. But I just didn't have a solid gold pocket watch or chain currently. And I didn't want to hold on to it long enough. So again, I'm in the business to make money, not to hold on to things. Um, I got a bunch of these old doll shoes in a lot for $10, probably 30 pairs. And here you can see this one pair sold for $10. I'm hoping that I can sell every pair for at least $10. So turn $10 into 300. This is mainly how I make my living is buying lots of things where I spend a small amount of money. I can spread that out and say, okay, I'm only in X amount of cents or maybe even X amount of dollars per item. So like in this case, it's easy when I think, well, I only have to sell each item for, even if I just sell each item for a dollar, you know, I'm going to, I spent $10. If I sold all 30 of these items for a dollar, that's $30. It's, it's a no-brainer. Um, the other, rest of them are going to sell, but I'm not sweating how quickly because I've already made my money back. All right, last couple ones here. This is a gold chain. This came from a thrift store. I paid $3 for this and the pendant that was on it. The pendant was a silver color, and it wasn't even really... It was like plastic that looked silver. Ugly, super cheap. But I noticed right away when I bought it that it had a golder tone uh, necklace. So I knew that the necklace of the chain that went with it was not a part of it originally. Somebody just put the pendant on. Took it home. There were no markings on it. But I scratch tested it and discovered that it was 10 karat gold. Solid gold. So I turned a $3. I just threw the pendant away. I didn't even want the pendant. It was like worthless. Cheap to me. But I took that $3 and because I tested it and I knew how to test it and I had the equipment. It's just a scratch test kit. Uh, I was able to sell this for $300. It was eight, a little over eight and a half grams of 10 karat gold. So that's great. That's the kind of stuff you want to find. That's, that's a, like, I only have to do one of those every couple of days and I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Um, and, uh, and I won't find them every other day, just so you know. I'll go weeks without finding things like that, but then sometimes I'll find more than one in a week. It's crazy. Last up, this was fun. This came in a rock and uh, mineral collection that I bought. It's a gold nugget. It's a solid gold nugget, like 24 karat. Um, a hundred percent of it isn't gold because there's definitely, um, it's growing in matrix with some quartz, some quartzite, which is what usually quartz veins is where you find gold. Um, this had originally been a part of like, I believe a museum collection as a specimen. And you can see that they had welded, uh, or soldered rather, um, a post onto this to hold it up to display. And then later on, it was cut off of that display and then cataloged and put in like these little containers and stuff. But anyways, put it up. Uh, almost five grams. It's a gold specimen. Again, almost $300. So uh, gold sells, people. You know that. I know that. But um, learn how to inspect things. Always look at the back of stuff. And I've been having a lot of luck with earrings lately. People don't seem to pay a whole lot of attention. Um, the little posts that go through your ear, uh, a lot of times very small, they'll have the marking that'll say 585 or 750 or 14K um, or on the back, on the inside. Uh, just inspect them closely. The best uh, way to first decide if you're gonna inspect it clearly is to see if there's a gold colored post. Um, 
if it's gold on the out on the front where you see the earring and then you look around back and it's also gold pull it off look at it um i found two in one week last week um one is a, a pair of what they call maybe pearl earrings and they're 14 karat the last one just like it sold for 700 dollars, and i paid three I haven't sold it yet, but that's what they're selling for. And another pair, uh, again, paid $3, and I sold them for $283 uh, within the same week. So good luck out there, guys. I hope that helps. Some of these were nicer, some were smaller. I sell stuff for a dollar, and I sell stuff for thousands of dollars and everything in between. Um, hopefully this helps. Um, it's fun. If you're interested in do it, you know, knock yourself out. Um, I have a good time with it. It's not the best thing in the world, but it, it is making a living and it's interesting for sure. So hope, hope you guys uh, have a, a good week, find some cool stuff and we'll catch you soon.